Okay, welcome back to the channel. Yeah, I just got a couple of these new uh, FR Sky R9MM receivers in. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at what the difference is. So in the package, you get a R9MM receiver. Uh, it looks <clears throat> almost identical to the R9 mini receiver. Uh, and you still get the pin header and the JST socket. Uh, just like you did in the R9 Minis. It doesn't come with the pigtail for that, but uh, if you wanted to set it up with a pigtail like this, uh, you can get these off of Amazon. They're a uh, JST 2.0 four pin connector. I'll put a, uh, I'll put a link to this pigtail uh, in the description below. I'll put this aside. And you get a instruction manual just like you did on the other receivers. Uh, this receiver's, uh, and I know it doesn't look different, but it, it is quite different than the R9 Mini. And the fact that the R9 Mini, same pin layout, same uh, IPEX Gen 4 connector, that tiny one that doesn't fit the Immortal T antennas. But the R9 Mini was a S bus out, a S port, F port out, ground, voltage in and a S bus in. This one is different in the fact that this bottom pin is no longer an S bus in, but it's a inverted S port signal. <clears throat> and uh, I, I know what you're probably thinking is, well, I thought S port was inverted. Well, in FR Sky's eyes, S port is S port. They're inverting it from the way that they transmit it to a inverted S port. So this pin here, will work on a normal F4 flight controller if you don't have that bi-directional inverter that we've been looking for. So you can set this up with S bus and S port on a F4 flight controller without using soft serial. And uh, in my testing, at least on my models, um, uh, soft serial adds up to anywhere from 30 to 40% CPU usage. So if you're running F4 and you're trying to get like 16K uh, gyro and pin loop or 32, 32, there's no way you're gonna do it if you're using soft serial. So this should relieve all those problems and we should be able to hook this up just like, just like if we were hook up, hooking up to an F3 or an F7 where that bi-directional inverter is native to the chipset. So taking a look at this, uh, I'll flash some pictures up, uh, some comparisons uh, between the, the R9 Mini and the R9MM receivers. And what I'm going to do today is I am going to install this into one of my race quads. This is a Floss 2.1 and I am installing it onto the uh, Omnibus F4 Firework flight controller, which does not have that bi-directional inverter for S-Port or telemetry, however you want to list it. Uh, this one, I have to use soft serial to get telemetry on my R9 mini receiver, and it it adds up to a lot of CPU usage. So, we're going to get this out of here, and I'll show you how to connect this guy to this board coming up. Okay, so first things first, we're going to get the old receiver out of there. I've got my soldering iron heated up to 662 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the... Uh, same smart TS80 and I haven't done a review on this guy yet because I've been trying to put it through its paces but I absolutely love the soldering iron. The TS100, I'm done with it. This thing is so much nicer uh, but that'll be in a different uh, different video down the road. All right so let's go ahead and let's just get this entire receiver out of here. We don't need, we don't need to try to salvage anything here. All right, now the old. Tweezers, tweezers, more tweezers. All right, there's one, two, three, and foul. All right, put that guy aside.
All right, so I've got some some wires tinned up. Go ahead and tin the pads on my receiver, at least the ones that I want to use. And I'm going to be using the S plus out. I'm going to be using the ground. power in and the inverted S port right there okay and we'll go ahead and do up our wires uh, I just have a little bit a few little pre tin wires here uh, no rhyme or reason to the colors it's just it's just what I'm picking so there's my S bus out Ground. Power. And my inverted S port. There we go. All right. There's my connections to that. <clears throat> now, it's time to solder to the board. Alright, now that I have all my wires tinned up, go ahead and make our connections on the board here. Alright, let's start off with ground. Uh, you can just pick any ground. It really doesn't matter where you ground it, as long as it's on a ground pad. It doesn't matter if it's a 5 volt ground or a V back ground. It, it doesn't matter. Ground is ground. They're all together. They're all common. All right. So we got ground, and then our our S bus pad. It's going to go here, where it says RC. And our power, I want to get power from someplace that's not powered by the flight controller uh, with the USB connected because I want to try to be able to flash, um, I want to be able to try to flash firmware to this using so uh, serial pass through. Let's shorten that up a little bit here. And there's our, there's that. Nope, that's not where I wanted that. I want this wire over here. All right. And now for our inverted S port, we'll just fix, uh, we'll just solder it to a TX of whatever UART we want to use. Um, in this case, I'm going to use TX3. So on this board, TX3 is right here. That's it. Let's shut our iron off. Clean it up and hit it with a little bit of fresh solder. There we go. All right. That should be all the connections we need to make this guy work. So next thing we're going to do, jump over to Vetaflight, and we're going to configure it and see what we end up with. Okay, here we are in Vetaflight. I have my flight controller connected to 
my computer. I've already gone ahead and bound my receiver to my transmitter. Uh, I create uh, I would recommend creating a new profile for your MM receivers as opposed to your mini receivers or any other receivers. Just I would have everything on their own uh, profile on your radio. So anyways, here we are, uh, Omnibus F4 Fireworks. A little bit of firmware and we're going to go ahead and flash this. So we're starting off with a blank copy of Betaflight 3.5.0. All right, flashing is complete. We'll go ahead and connect to our flight controller. We'll go ahead and set up our ports. On this particular flight controller, UART1 is gonna be my serial RX, so that's our S bus wire. Our S port wire on this flight controller is gonna be UART3, so we're gonna switch that to smart port telemetry. And let's see, I have TBS smart audio on UART2. You don't need to set that up. And the rest looks right. Save and reboot. And just double check, make sure everything's still there the way we had it set up. Yes, it is. All right, go to configuration. And I'm going to set up a few things here. Come down to receiver, make sure we're selected on serial based receiver, and then select S bus. Make sure we turn on telemetry, otherwise, we're not going to get telemetry. Uh, and that's all you really need to set up. Save and reboot. Now, my CPU load is 40%. Previous to this, when I was using soft serial for the setup, I was running 80% on a 1616 uh, setup. All right, we're going to go down to receiver here and see if we have our sticks. We do not. Got to connect my battery. Idiot. All right. And there it is. Uh, our RC commands are working right out of the box. Go ahead and set this up so we're not flipping out. All right, as you see, our RC commands are here. And now I'm gonna go over to my new profile I created in my Tyrannus. Go to the telemetry page. If there are uh, sensors already discovered, go ahead and delete all those. And select Discover New Sensors. And for me, it's populating all my sensors. There you go, very simple setup. FR Sky R9 MM receiver to a standard F4 flight controller that does not have a bi-directional inverter for telemetry. Very simple to hook up, no soft serial required, save some CPU cycles, save the frustration, the headache. Get yourself an R9 MM if you have an F4 that doesn't have a telemetry pad. If you run an F3 or an F7 or an F4 that does have the bi-directional inverter on the telemetry pad, don't worry about it. Get yourself an MM or get yourself a Mini. It's gonna work just the same. Uh, there are little differences in the flight controllers. You just gotta have to pick which one you're gonna want for your build. Anyways, if you like what I'm doing, like, subscribe, click that bell button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box down below. I try to get back to everybody and I try to help out as many people as I can especially when it comes to this type of stuff because it'd be very confusing and it's honestly not that difficult. Just got to follow the steps and in a methodical process and get it working. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you learned something and I hope it helps someone out. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.